So uh, this is another one you asked that you would like to do. So you're going to do it, and then I'm going to do one to counter it. Okay, that sounds good. You're Song that. fight. Um, real quick, uh, this is a companion song to a novel. It started out as a companion song to a short story. Funny but, how that happens. But I expanded the short story into a full-blown novel that has very little to do with the short story, but I still keep the short story because it's actually not, not bad. But the novel is, is the thing. And uh, it, weirdly, the, short story, the song works for both the short story and the novel. The novel's called The Long Trample. And it was my thesis novel for my master's degree, uh, which I got recently from Antioch. And, uh, you know, Jim Crusoe, the great Jim Crusoe, uh, my, my mentor there, he said, one of my mentors, when I first met him, when I first had him, I said, now, Jim, and, th and this guy is one of the most respected literary figures in America, okay? And I'm a fan of his. And I couldn't believe it. I was sitting there across from Jim Crusoe. I said, Jim, here's a list of the books I've read over the last two years. And he was a little impressed by that, which I, I, I was glad. Wasn't put off by it. And I said, in order to really understand my fiction, you have to know that I write companion songs to my short stories. Here's my last two albums. If you, if you have the time, could you listen to them? He goes, oh, here we go. I thought, no way he's going to do that. Two days later, I meet with him. And he goes, that, he's a very cool dude. He's just very hip and very sweet. And he goes, that song about the Civil War, he's intense too, that song about the Civil War photographer, he says, I missed my exit on the freeway. <laughs> That's a novel. And I said, you're right, I am developing it as a novel. And he has some really great suggestions of books to read to influence. He was just so shrewd about it, he was so good. A year and a half later, almost two years later now, I have the novel. It was a finalist for the Dana Awards uh, for Novel in Progress. And, it's, and this song is called Greenhouse. Attend a garden downstate in the wilds of Illinois. You might say I'm married to the soil. But in the spring of 61, Jeff Davis drew a line Like we was water and Dixie was the oil By the time of my enlistment, Manassas had occurred 481 good men were killed But I am just a gardener with two humble green thumbs Firing a gun is not my skill The only shooting you should do Is with this boxy thing They said to me to calm my panicked fear Light comes in, hits the glass, captures what you see so with the so-called camera, I took up the rear. We hung a sheet between two poles and everybody posed. While well, I refined my portraiture technique. The boys were full of bluff and bluster in their uniforms. And then a hundred died Wilson's Creek Roses blooming in the snow Cut down with a sword Someone spilled red wine Against the white I trampled out The vintage where The grapes of wrath are stored Nowadays I'm standing In the light I photographed the things they carried and the things they lost, including gangrene limbs and all their friends. But I'd have given anything if I could recapture the essence 
of my own lost innocence. From Chancellorsville to Chickamauga, I did my duty well. A wagon of glass plates I did collect. At Appomattox Courthouse, I saluted General Grant, turned over a bloody retrospect. Ulysses sorted through the pile for hours without a word. At times he worked a cigar in his mouth. At last he shook my hand and said, I've got no use for these. Went off to finalize things with the South. To haul my wagon back to Springfield it took me several months. Because every hour I had to stop and stare. For though we'd saved the Union, there just wasn't nothing left. The country I had once known wasn't there. Roses blooming in the snow, cut down with a sword. Someone spilled red wine against the white. I trampled out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. Nowadays I'm standing in the light. The garden I'd once tended was wild and gone to weeds. Crows and goats ignored me as they grazed. I built myself a greenhouse with those photograph glass plates. Seemed a shame to let them go to waste. Sometimes the faces mock me, enshrined in black and white. Sometimes I want to smash them with a spade. But other times the sun breaks through and for a little while. I watch the memories blister, pop, and fade. Roses blooming in the snow, cut down with a sword. Someone spilled red wine against the white. I trampled out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. Nowadays I'm standing in the light. Nowadays I'm stranded in the light. Thank you. Yeah, I've listened to that now I don't know, three or four times uh, pre in preparation for this, and I've the picture of Ulysses S. Grant looking at those, the mental picture of him looking through the pictures and then saying that. It's such an interesting way to put that, because clearly he's, he's mesmerized by them and then can't handle it, really. Yeah. I'll tell you what inspired that song. Um, I watched the Ken Burns Civil War oh, documentary. So I had good. not seen it on, when it was broadcast, and so I got the DVDs from the library. And um, of course, you know, once you start one, you just you just uh, so, binge so well watch done. it. I just you know this was this was about twelve years ago, and um, I watched it all the way to the end, and uh, I really got caught up in it. You know, my family was like, "Where's?" What happened to you? <laughs> and I was out there, and I and finally, after 30 hours of this or whatever it is, the host, the late great David McCullough, he's, I think he did die, didn't he? But uh, he was so good, and he goes, a footnote. He said, there were tens of thousands of photographs taken of the Civil War using the glass plate technology of the day. Unfortunately, very few of those plates survived. People were so traumatized by the carnage that the plates were recycled and turned into greenhouses wow. where the images of war were burned away by the sun. 
I, I dropped it. I said, yeah, that sounds like a Robert Morgan Fisher song. Another guaranteed hit. So I dropped my, I was just, I mean, literally, you could have put, knocked me over with a feather. And all I remember about it was that I went into my office and I closed the door and I wrote that song in a trance. And what you hear is exactly that, that's a first draft iteration. And <laughs> it's such a rare thing, you guys. Everybody, I mean, a lot of people here write songs. I, I know, I know you. And uh, when that happens, you just take it. It's really a good thing. 